Hey guys, want to throw together a quick video just to explain to you guys what's happening again in chapter 7. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just walk you guys through some of the problems on that proficiency test 1 that you all are doing for homework. Um, you know, a, the big thing about this chapter is um, that these problems are ordered for us in ways that, in, in different units, in ways that... Um, we're not quite used to. And, and what we're trying to find is, again, in most and pretty much all of these questions is the pump setting, which, again, the idea when we're trying to set a pump setting is to get it into milliliters per hour. So what's happening in all of these problems is we're trying to get this, but we may be given something completely different. We may be given a drug dose. So because of that, the dosage needs... We need to see how this medicine comes in order to get it into milliliters instead of milligrams, for instance, or milliequivalents or units or something along those lines. Or perhaps maybe it's given to us in a dose as well, but it's given to us um, per minute, and we need to get it into hours, or it, pay, it may be based on a patient's weight, and we need to get it, uh, you know, we need to get the dosage uh, specifically for that patient's weight. So starting at the very beginning of your all's homework assignment there, everything is given to us in, at least the first two are given to us in units. And again, that's a medication dosage, not necessarily a, you know, a volume per hour. Instead, what's been ordered, for instance, like on number one, it says we have been ordered uh, insulin 15 units. And so we know that the patient needs 15 units but I want to know what that is, again, in terms of milliliters per hour. Again, this. This is what we want to get that to. So how do I go from units to milliliters is what I'm looking at here. I know what it is in units per hour. I want it to be in milliliters, and that's based on how the insulin is, is you know, how it comes. So it says that on the supply, we have an infusion pump, but a standard solution of insulin is 125 units in 250 milliliters. So we need to... Take that. That's just it, this just becomes kind of a dosage calculation then. So we would just take and divide that. What we have is 125 units per. It's a T per 250 milliliters. So we would just do that, and that would end up giving us our answer there. We just take 15 divided by 125 times 250. And what's great is you're actually going to do the exact same type of setup on number two as well as uh, number three. The only difference with number, number three is that it's given to us in minutes. So with number three, it says we get, uh, you know, we've ordered, it says two grams in 500 milliliters of D5W at, and here's your rate. Here's what's been ordered. The rate that is given to us, again, uh, we, want it, well, we want it to be milliliters per hour, um, but again, the rate that's been given to us here as far as how it's been ordered is 2 milligrams per minute. So here on number 3, two things need to be changed. I need to somehow get my milliliters to, to I mean, I'm sorry, my milligrams to milliliters. Sorry, I drew that, that arrow backwards. Uh, I need to get my milligrams to milliliters, and I need minutes to be in hours. So we're actually going to do two steps here. One, based on, again, the fact that the medicine comes... As it says in the supply, the infusion pump standard solution of 2 grams in 500 milliliters of D5W. So that is how we're going to get from the milligrams to milliliters. Um, and then, obviously, the minutes to hours, we need, need to base on the fact that there are 60 minutes in an hour. So we'll end up multiplying by 60. So what has to happen first is we're, we're, we can go ahead and, one, I'm going to go ahead and just say, you know what, if I'm getting 2 milligrams if I'm getting 2 milligrams each minute, if I multiply that by 60, that translates out to be 120 milligrams an hour. So I know what it is in milliliters. I mean, I'm sorry, milligrams per hour. I want to get it in milliliters per hour, and that's going to be based on the dosage. So here's where the dosage calculation comes in. There's my order dose, 120, and then I'm going to divide that now by my milligrams of how it comes. Again, they told us 2 grams. We know 2 grams is 2,000 milligrams. And then our quantity, it's per 500. So it's still the same case. We're still going to end up doing a dosage calculation here, but we just need to make sure we change a few things before we go ahead and put that in to that dosage calculation. 
Um, let's see. It ends up looking like on number four, it's just a straightforward dosage calculation there on number four in that what you're going to do, what's been ordered is five. Oh, whoops. I need to get my pen back here. What's been ordered is five milligrams per hour, and I want it to be in milliliters per hour. So I've already got it in hours. I just need to go based on the dosage. So I would just take 125 milligrams in my quantity of 100. So that's what I end up doing on this one. Number five, very, very similar, kind of similar there to then number, uh, what we did in number three. On number five, what we have to do there is, again, because it's given as milligrams per minute, um, since they ordered four milligrams per minute, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, if that's what we're getting each minute, I simply just multiply by 60 to see what that would be each hour. So that's going to end up being a total of 240 milligrams per hour. Again, the idea is to then take it to milliliters per hour. That's going to be based on the dosage. So very similar to number three, it was told to that, you know, the supply is two grams in 500 milliliters. Again, we need D and H to match in our dosage calculations. So that's going to be 2,000 milligrams per 500 is how we'll solve number five. Now, number six, uh, if you've already gotten to number six, uh, there were some confusing parts with number six, and I ended up kind of getting confused myself. But what we end up doing first, number six asks us a two-part question. I'm going to tell you guys now, number six, anything like number six will not be on the quiz. Uh, but just to kind of explain to you guys what's happening is they've ordered potassium chloride 40 milliequivalents per liter um, at 10 milliequivalents per hour. Um, so they've given us, that's the rate that they've given us there in 1,000 milliliters of 5% dextrose water. Um, the supply is an infusion pump labeled potassium chloride 20 milliequivalents per 10 milliliters. So the first part is how much potassium chloride should be added. So on that one, you would end up taking 40, because that's the order dose of milliequivalents of, pota oh, <laughs> of potassium chloride, and it comes 20 milliequivalents per 10 milliliters. So that's how you would do letter A. Uh, but letter B is asking for the pump setting, and so that's going to be based on that rate, that the rate was 10 milliequivalents per hour, and so since they've ordered 10 milliequivalents per hour, let me go ahead and just put that 10 milliequivalents per hour. Again, the idea is to get it from milliequivalents to milliliters per hour, and this is where I got kind of stumped because I had to end up, I, what I first did was took it as 20, then or divided by 20 times 10, but the solutions in the back of the book needed that D5W, and that was because it has to do with the fact that we have, what we got for letter A was 20 milliliters, and so we have to incorporate that into now our solution, so it ends up making 1,000 milliliters of D5W there. So it ends up being actually divided by 20 milliequivalents, and then multiplying it by the 1,000 milliliters of D5W as our quantity in that case, because we had to first add that potassium chloride. It doesn't tell us on the supply the quantity of, you know, the D5W. That was part of the order dose, so that's why we ended up multiplying by 1,000, not 10 in that case. So because of that, I thought that number six ended up being a little bit more confusing, so I'm going to take number six off, and I'm not. If you all skip it on your homework, that is totally fine with me. Just know that you all will not see one like number six on the quiz next week. Okay, guys, then we get down to uh, number eight, and number eight, what's great about number eight is it's just, it's just a straight uh, milliliters per hour question, kind of like what we had with our... Um, flow rate and infusion pump setting from last week, uh, that it says what's been ordered uh, was 50 milligrams in 500 milliliters of D5W over six hours. So the rate that they've told us right there is already kind of set for us. They told us that they have ordered 500 milliliters per six hours. So they've already given it to us in milliliters per hour. We just have to, we, we just know what it is in six hours. So just to get it to milliliters per one hour, we just take 500 divided by six, and that would give us our infusion pump setting. Whereas then, um, oh, did I call that number? Yeah, that was number eight. I completely skipped over number seven. Number seven, actually, guys, I'm sorry, is the same as what we did in numbers three and five. 
So you ended up on number seven. You took two times 60 to get that out of minutes and into hours, and then you would end up dividing by 2,000 times 500. So I'm sorry, I completely skipped over uh, number seven there, but again, that's just the same as those others. Um, number nine ends up being another dosage calculation. It's ordered as units per hour, and they told us that it's 200 units and 500 milliliters, so it's another dosage calculation. So we take 18 divided by 200 times 500 on that one. That's just a, a basic dosage calculation. Now, number 10 gets a little bit different because it's ordered in micrograms per minute. So there's two things that have to change on this one since our uh, supply dose comes in milligrams. One, we're going to have to take that 250 micrograms, that's a C, sorry, terrible handwriting here, uh, and turn it into milligrams first because we need it to be in milligrams since that's the supply dosage. Uh, but we're also, because it's micrograms per minute, we're also going to have to get that to hours by multiplying by 60. And the order you choose to take that in does not matter. You can go ahead and multiply it by 60 first, or you can multiply by 60 second. It, do, it does not matter. Uh, I'm just in the habit of going ahead and just directly changing it to milligrams first. So since 250 micrograms is 0.25 um, milligrams. I then took that and multiplied that by 60 um, so that that means we we're gonna uh, have ordered 15 milligrams per hour and then it just becomes what we've been doing so far and then now that I have it in milligrams per hour I can go ahead and put that into a dosage calculation. It ended up being 15 divided by uh, 500 times 500. So our answer would be 15 on that one. Um, let's see, number 11 pretty much does the same thing. However, incorporating one more thing, we end up having to base that on the body weight. So multiple things have to happen here. Since it's given to me as 2.5 micrograms, and I'm just going to kind of write this in kind of a line. Sorry, that's a horrible looking C, but micrograms per kilogram per minute. So just to kind of get us you know, to where we need to be. Again, guys, the end goal is milliliters per hour. So what has to happen is three things. One, I have to get this to milligrams first because I need it to, you know, get it to that supply, based on the supply dosage as far as how it comes uh, and what it tells us there in the supply section there on number 11. So I'm gonna have to get that to milligrams first. Um, because it's going to be per kilogram, I also have to incorporate the patient's body weight and get that out of there. So since the patient's body weight in this question is 60, I'm going to end up multiplying it by 60 in order to incorporate that weight since it is per kilogram. And then uh, also multiplying it by 60 here to get it from minutes into hours. I'm also going to have to remember there are 60 minutes in an hour. So those three things all have to happen. And just like we talked about in class, it does not matter which order you go in. Again, I'm just in the habit of changing the metrics first because it's just a quick movement of a decimal, and then I can go ahead and put that into a calculator. So micrograms there, 2.5 micrograms is 0 0.0025 milligrams. So I've already kind of eliminated that step there. Let me use a different color here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I've eliminated that step. My next step, I went ahead and just multiplied it by the 60 as the patient's body weight there. And then I did the same thing to get it from hours to minutes. So I've kind of did it as one whole step there. And that got me to 9 milligrams per hour. And so that was that's my way of going ahead and, and then incorporating that into that problem. So it just becomes a dosage calculation now. So I divide that by 400 and then, divide, and then go ahead and multiply by the you know, the quantity of 250. So I'm going to end up taking 9 divided by 400 times 250 at the end there. Sorry, that handwriting looks terrible. But the exact same thing is actually going to happen on number 14 on the back page. It's the exact same thing as that, that it starts off as 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So those three things have to happen. Um, so just to get this out of the way, very, very similar. Those three things need to be changed first. So since it's 5 micrograms per kilogram per minute, so those three things have to happen. One, I've got to convert that to milligrams. I have to incorporate the patient's body weight, which was 90 kilograms. And I have to get the minutes into hours. If 
by multiplying by 60. So I did that, once again, I did that as one whole step. I took 5 times 90 times 60, ended up coming out with, sorry, I can't read my own handwriting, 27 milligrams per hour, and that's what's put into the dosage calculation. So I then divided that by 50 and multiplied by 250. And guys, that was number 14. I'm sorry I'm moving so quickly. I'm kind of short on time, and I want to make sure you guys get this so you guys can study this weekend. Um, it looks like, and that was just, I did that one because that was the same thing that we did on the previous question. Um, on number 12, since, again, since that one's in milliunits, don't forget, on number 12 there, since it's 2 milliunits, I'm just going to write that as MU, not that that's the correct abbreviation at all, but milliunits, uh, milliunits are very, very similar to milligrams and grams. Since the supply dosage does come in units, I do need to convert that to units. So by doing, you know, the same thing I would do if this was milligrams. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I have terrible handwriting. Um, the same thing I would do if this was milligrams and I needed to convert it to grams. So it's the same exact case, divide by a thousand or move three places to the left so that ends up, um, you know, ends up becoming, let's see, sorry, point zero zero two in units and then since it's milli units per minute I once again had to multiply by 60 to get it into uh, regular units first but units per hour so that ended up becoming point one two units per hour and that's what I used to divide by uh, the supply so the nine units per 150 milliliters and that's what I, that was on number 12. The last one on your all's homework assignment, guys, was number 15, and that ends up being very, very similar to the ones we did on the previous page. But again, two things need to happen. We need to convert that uh, micrograms uh, into milligrams and minutes into hours. So on number 15, I ended up taking two times, oh, I'm sorry, not two times, I'm sorry, I changed it to, um, as I've been doing before, I ended up changing my micrograms to milligrams first. So two micrograms, again, is 0 0.002 milligrams. And then that's what I multiplied by 60 because, again, I need to get it into hours, not in minutes. So that ends up being, let's see, so that ends up being 0 0.12 is that correct? Yes, it just, sorry, it confused me because I was uh, seeing the same number as I did in number 12. But that's the same thing here in number 15. It ends up being 0 0.12 milligrams. And since that comes in 4 milligrams per 250, that's how I would end up solving number 15 on that one. So um, I know I quickly walked you guys through that, but I hope that helps you guys in the problems on the homework. I had to throw that together really quickly because I have been... Uh, kind of busy this week and I haven't had a chance to put that together and I wanted to make sure that you guys had something for this weekend. Please let me know if you guys have any questions at all um, and you know that we will go over this more in class on Monday. Thanks guys.